Hi and welcome to the first video in the JavaScript coding tutorial series. In this series we are going to be learning the JavaScript programming language and using JavaScript to add interactivity and functionality to web pages. Uh, JavaScript is traditionally used on the web. It's, uh, it's a language that's been around since the 90s and it's a language that's used to add functionality to web pages to allow users to be able to interact uh, with a web page, whereas languages like HTML and CSS only really allow us to um, add content and change the appearance of a web page, um, an actual programming language like JavaScript allows us to add functionality and interaction. So it's been used a lot for, for web design, for um, client side programming where you have JavaScript code that runs in a user's browser, um, but it's also used on the server side as well, so we can create uh, dynamic applications that deliver uh, different content to uh, to users um, based on what they're requesting. In this series we're going to look at um, programming JavaScript on the client side, so writing code that runs in the user's browser on a web page, um, and then in future tutorial series we'll look at how to um, write um, JavaScript code for server-based or server-side applications and um, for apps and and all sorts of different things. So um, in this series we'll mostly be using JavaScript on web pages. Okay now to write JavaScript code you're, um, you're going to need a code editor to write your code. So something like um, Visual Studio Code which is free and this runs on both uh, Mac and Windows um, and that's what I'm going to be using in this series. I'm going to be writing my code using Visual Studio Code. Um, so you can get that from code.visualstudio.com, um, but there are plenty of other editors uh, that you can use like Atom, uh, Sublime Text, uh, Notepad++, uh, even just a basic text editor. As long as you can save um, HTML and JavaScript files, um, then you can write code. But a nice text coding editor like this will allow you to um, uh, uh, write your code and see errors and um, it's color coded and everything so it's quite nice. Okay so first thing if you haven't got a code editor download that. Secondly um, it's best to have a bit of experience with HTML and CSS code before you start writing uh, JavaScript code. Uh, so if you haven't already learned those two languages you can go and have a look at my HTML and CSS uh, series and learn a bit of that before you start writing JavaScript code. So as I mentioned um, we're going to be mostly making um, uh, JavaScript programs that will run in a web page, but uh, JavaScript uh, is a flexible language. It's used in lots of different ways these days, so it is used on um, most websites to add functionality and, and interactivity to web pages, but it's also used for things like games, so lots of online games are written in JavaScript code, um, and even mobile and desktop apps and games can be written in JavaScript using different tools. So there's lots that we can do with JavaScript. Now I'm going to open up Visual Studio Code and what I've done here already is I've created a HTML file which I've saved in this folder here. I've just created a folder for this um, tutorial series where I'll keep all my code and so I, I created a new file which I did by just clicking File and New File or Command N or Control N if you're on a PC uh, and then Save As and I saved it as index.html, so it's a HTML file. Depending on what um, uh, editor and operating system you're using, you might need to, when you click Save As, um, you might need to change the file type to HTML uh, and just make sure it's saved as index.html. All right, now I can write JavaScript code in my HTML file, which I'll show how to do in a moment. But I can also write code in a separate JavaScript file and I've already got one that I've created which is called script.js. So the same thing, you'd create a new file uh, and then you would click save as and save it as something.js. Um, so JavaScript files end in the .js extension and make sure um, you've either clicked JavaScript down here uh, for the file type or you've just ended it in .js and it will work out that it's a JavaScript file. I'm not going to use this file immediately, but we'll come back to that a little bit later. Now, 
I've got a HTML web page template here. There isn't any content on the web page. I've just got my HTML tags that um, contains the HTML code. I've got the head section, which is where I have the title of the, the web page. So I've actually got that web page up open here and we can see the title on the tab, but there's no content on the page. Uh, and then in the body section, that's where we would add the content to our web page. All right. Now with JavaScript code, you can add it in either the head section or the body section or both, and you can have JavaScript throughout a web page in, in different places. So um, what I'll do in this tutorial is I'll just add it to the head section. And there's two ways of adding JavaScript code. You can type in the script tag, just like that. And that's all you really need to do. And then you can type your JavaScript code between the starting and ending or closing script tags. Um, you can also say script uh, type equals text slash JavaScript. But you don't really need to do that uh, these days. You can, you can leave that out if you want and the browser will still know that there's JavaScript code uh, in there. That will still work fine. Okay, so this is where JavaScript code goes between this, the script tags. All right. Um, now, traditionally, when you're learning a new language for the first time, what you would do is write code to display a hello world message to the user. So that's what we're going to do now, but we're going to use two different methods. First method we'll use is uh, the console. So we'll say console.log and then in brackets and quotation marks. And it can be either single or, or double quotes. I'm going to say hello world. And then we'll end that line with a semicolon. So in JavaScript and in lots of other languages, a semicolon indicates the end of an instruction or the end of a statement. Um, and you, typically you just have one statement or instruction per line. So it's kind of like a full stop or a period in code. Okay, now what this is saying is to in the console and the console is uh, it's uh, available in web browsers. It's where um, messages are printed or displayed to. So error messages or little log messages and things like that. We are going to log in the console a message and uh, we have a parameter here or some information that we can provide for this log, which is a message and it's going to be hello world and it needs to be contained within quotes. Okay, so if we go back to the browser and we refresh this page, we don't actually see anything. What we need to do is open up the console so we can right click um, to open up the console. Uh, you can also click on the menu and go down to more tools and developer tools. All right, so you can either do that or you can right click and click on inspect and that will do the same thing. It will open up this panel where you can then click on the console and here we go. We can see our little message here that says hello world. If I refresh the web page, um, I would have seen hello world um, show up there. If I just clear the console and refresh the page, that code runs again and I see hello world. The other method that you can use is to actually display some content in the web page document itself. So we can display the hello world message in, uh, in here somewhere. All right. So to do that, we'd say document dot write and similar to console.log, we have brackets and quotation marks and we could say hello world and then end that statement or instruction with a quotation mark. Okay. So, Console.log will display a message in the console. Document.write will display a message or some content in the actual web page itself, the document. So if I save that and refresh the page, there it is. Hello world. Okay, the text is nice and big just because I've uh, zoomed in on this web page. It would usually be a lot smaller, but I've zoomed in. So this is what's written to uh, or displayed in the document. And this is what has been printed or displayed in the console. Okay, um, so those are two different methods. Now we're going to be using this method a lot to start off with in the tutorials. Uh, we'll either use console.log to output um, results of maybe running some code or some instructions, uh, or we might use document.write if we want to display something on the web page. But as we move on uh, and learn more code, there are other better ways of displaying information to the user 
um, particularly in a web browser on a web page, rather than using document.write. Console.log, though, we'll still use that a lot because it's quite handy for testing if we want to run some code and test it out and see what the what results it's, it produces. We can use um, console.log to just output uh, the result very quickly and easily in the console and see what's happening. So it's quite useful to use for testing. Okay. Um, also, what's important to know, and I'll mention this now, is that we can add comments to our code. So comments are useful for when we meet either maybe want to add a, a little note explaining how some of the code works, or uh, we maybe want to add a little reminder or to do something that we need to fix, maybe a bug in the code that we need to remind ourselves to fix later, or maybe just some information about who wrote the code and when it was last updated. So a single line comment can be written by, write, by typing in two forward slashes, and then you just type in your comment like that. Okay. So I might just say um, this line or this code will display a hello world message. And that's a comment. So a comment uh, isn't actually an instruction that's going to be uh, carried out by this program. It's, it's, um, it's kind of ignored. It's just a little note or a comment in the code. It's not an instruction. So when this program runs in the web browser, when Chrome runs this, um, it's going to sort of skip or ignore that line of code and just run these two. Now, what I'd also like to show um, just before we um, end this tutorial is how we can move this code here to a separate file. All right, so I've got another file here called script.js. What I'm going to do is cut this code, paste it in here, and I'll just bring this up in uh, two tabs. I'll save that. So now all of my JavaScript code is in this separate script.js file. And both of these files, the HTML and JavaScript file, they're both in the same folder. So all I need to do is change the script tag to look like this. Script source equals, and then the name of the file, script.js, and then just close off that script tag. Both of those files are saved. If I refresh the page, Everything's still the same, but instead of loading the code from um, the web page here, um, it's looking at this JavaScript file and then loading the code from there. All right, that's it for this tutorial. In the next tutorial, um, we're going to start looking at how to store data in our programs. So we'll look at variables um, and uh, how to start writing some instructions or statements in our code. Thanks for watching.